This is what a 100,000 euro Audi Q7 looks like. Welcome to Not Beyond Cars. This is a three liter V6 engine mated to a battery to give you a huge amount of brake horsepower, a huge amount of torque, but actually a car that is relatively cheap to run. I didn't say buy, to run if you charge it all the time. Audi have facelifted their famous flagship SUV to give it a slightly different grill now, slightly different badge, which we've, I suppose, gotten used to with the Olympics, sort of. You have matrix headlights over the front, black high gloss inserts, and even a couple of air curtains that go over these really large black alloy wheels. As we like to say in Ireland, this is a big bus. It's over five meters long. It's just under two meters wide. It's 1.78 meters tall. So there has been times this week where I'm kind of like this, trying to squeeze past a Yaris with four people who are being sensible. And over the rear, we have a black strip on this S-Line version of the car. S-Line in loads of ways, but then some other ways that are a bit confusing. Why are the pedals just rubber, for example. Where's the metal on the S-Line trim for 100 grand Audi? Nonetheless, the updated badge makes its way around to the back of the car as well. And you get a really extensive space to fit all the things that you might need to fit into this car. And there's many different options when it comes to tethering things down, which is one of the reasons the armed support unit from Angarda Shiakana use Audi Q7s because you can put gun cabinets in the back of them. For the rest of us though, whether it's a trip to Super Value or Lidl, it will do the weekly shop with ease. Uh, there's a couple of storage nets, nothing too fancy, a very fancy LED light, and you can raise and lower the air suspension to help load things in. Speaking of which, from a load point of view, there's nothing here. It's just nice and easy to get access to the rear. I'm pleased to say for your money's worth, you're getting a lot of space in the back of the Q7. Not just space, there's good plastic throughout. There's air vents for your rear passengers. The door lining is nice. There's nets on the back of these seats. You get your own individual climate control with a couple of air vents. There's even old style ashtray inserts in the doors and an actual cigarette lighter. Now, it can be a 12 volt, but there's a 12 volt beside it. There's an actual cigarette lighter in this car. Come on, Audi, smoking kills. Individual seats all have their own Isofix and you can operate them in an individual capacity. So, for example, take this down, load stuff into the boot. You can do the exact same with that seat and this seat. And you can obviously adjust the angle like that. As you can see, we have an armrest, not an easy to get down armrest, but a good angle on it. Drinks holders in here for everybody. No tablet or device holders, which would be nice. Plenty of headspace, but you may have noticed there's no glass up here. That's right. Now, some of you comment on my video saying they just add weight, we don't get the weather in Ireland. I think for 100 grand, I'd like to have the option of opening my glass roof if I wanted to. Thanks very much. Oh, and one other handy feature, you can move these seats individually back and forward also to give you even more boot space should you need it. I don't think you will, but again, it's nice to have the option. They like to change things slowly in Audi. And for example, there's nothing really here that you won't have seen in a 2018 Audi A6, for example. Speaking of which, the new Model A6 was announced this week. Some of you say it looks like a Ford Mondeo. Not sure I quite agree with that. There is an S6 version, no mention of an RS6 just yet, but I'm sure it'll be a thing. Anyway, back to the present. The Q7 has all that glass haptic stuff. It's generally very classy looking, but there are times when I'm stabbing at buttons three times to, for example, turn off the speed sign monitoring. I bet you it'll work now because we're filming. No. Nope. Yeah, two stabs at the button on this occasion. So that can get a little bit frustrating. It does all feel extremely premium though, 
no one really does interiors in mass production cars quite like Audi as far as I'm concerned. The stitching, the metal inserts, the high gloss black. It will get scratched if you're not careful. Uh, two cup holders down here. Another cigarette logo. What is that about Audi? Under here, a very pleasant armrest with wireless charging going on. Of course, you get a reversing camera. There you go. That gives you an idea of your surroundings. It's not a 360 view though, unlike my drone shots. Audi said it's good for a range of about 85 uh, kilometers. My experience is more like 50. This is a big heavy bus. But if you do plug it in, you're talking about four liters per 100 kilometers. You can use it with petrol and electric. You can use it in just electric modes. That will obviously deplete the battery quicker. You can charge it on the way to somewhere or you can maintain whatever battery level you have for use at a later time of the day if you're going into a zero emission zone, for example. Lovely seats. They have modernized these a little bit. They feel thinner. Uh, if you've ever been on a 737 and Max, you'll know the seats are quite similar, but they're, the backs of them are very, very thin. They've kind of done a similar job with the seats in the S line. I'm just trying to shoehorn an aviation reference in, but nonetheless, they're very comfortable. I would like to have seen air cooled options on these seats, not just heated, you know. Uh, there's a drive select mode where you can select all road efficiency comfort because this is a quattro uh, dynamic and you can raise and higher the suspension comfort mode is where i've kind of left it it's a little bit hard in other modes if you're lowering it uh, great for cornering great for grip but not so great if you're going over the endless amount of ramps that we have around dublin um, overall it feels good to the touch it doesn't have radar crews it just has normal cruise and it doesn't have blind spot I, I i don't know either there's quite a few things you need to do every time you start up the q7 you've got to turn off the speed sign recognition you've got to uh, decide do you want it in full ev mode or do you want it to do its hybrid thing or do you want to just use the petrol engine and the petrol head in you might want to hear the v6 rumble more than anything and it's fairly discreet you know don't be expecting a golf or soundtrack because you're just not going to get that in this car it's more of a subtle but it's still a lovely v6 rumble so this car is just shy of 400 brake horsepower it's not shy of 600 newton meters of torque so from a towing capacity point of view just from shifting what is a very large vehicle it makes life quite easy for you here's your typical ramp in dublin slowing down a little bit for it and it goes over it quite nicely but if you turn the drive select into uh, dynamic which puts the gear s tronic shifter into s mode you'll hear more of that v6 and things get noticeably firmer and unsettled even just on road surfaces never mind the ramps we're talking about which are still quite hard so you know maybe i'm showing my age here but uh comfort thank you two clicks of the haptics again there um seating position obviously is huge and high and you'll see everything around you uh glass is really substantial so visibility is, is very very good and it's nicely insulated from the outside world. There's no doubt about that. Audi Ireland tell me there's also a Vorsprung pack, which is available at the moment. It's four grand. Uh, that's a lot, Nobby. Yeah, okay, but wait till I tell you. So that will get you the panoramic glass roof. It'll get you a Bang & Olufsen sound system. It will get you the Valcona leather, which is extra comfortable. And you know, you need your bottom to be comfortable when you're driving around and such an expensive car. There's a few other bits on that pack. Uh, so four grand in the overall scheme of things is really not too expensive. And it, it genuinely does shift. You put the boot down, you can hear that turbo doing its thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's, you know, don't be deceived by the size of it. It's still a very capable car of uh, shifting around. Now, perhaps you can justify such a big vehicle. It's not like it's a seven seater or anything, 
but maybe your life involves you towing horses or mobile homes, caravans, whatever you want to call them. Um, it will do all that stuff very nicely. If you don't charge it, it's going to do about 10 to 12 litres per 100 kilometres. There's the UK MPG figure for you down there. A lot of people like to ask about MPG. I'm just trying to please as many markets as I can on this independent little channel of mine, which if you'd like to support, there's ways in the description down below. You can buy me a coffee. Uh, dot com have a look for Nobby on cars there or just search Mark Noble I'll come up you can PayPal you can you can become a member on YouTube whatever you want to do it all helps and what is truly a fully independent channel I get money from YouTube ad revenue end of list you will graciously if that's possible in such a big vehicle waft around uh, in silence a lot of the time once again uh, you, when you have it charged up um, and yeah it's just it's a it's a nice way to exist you know it's just nice that's the best way i can describe it uh not on it it's just anything like it's it's very nice it's very luxurious um you can't i suppose forget the elephant in the room that is it's very closely rated cousin in porsche because they have some vehicles that are very very similarly priced including the new KN and some people might just prefer a Porsche badge. It still has a lovely growl, particularly if you whack it into S mode. It will hold on to the gears for longer, do all the typical things that S mode does in a vehicle. Um, and it definitely is sharper through the corners with the suspension just being uh, a more rigid setup. Overall though, the Q7, it's not cheap, but it's just as capable as it's ever been. It's a little bit lacking in some of the extras that probably should be standard, but that is Audi for you. They like you to be able to customize your car and put different packs onto it. It's very comfortable cruising around and I've done some good stretches in it this week. It's reasonably efficient. Uh, it's eye-catching. It's huge. But it will make you feel a little bit better about your life. And, you know, sometimes in cars, when you're spending that much money, that's important. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on it. Would you have it over a Porsche or a BMW? Or would you go for something else?